Some of the common structures we encounter every day are buildings, bridges, and monuments. There are also other structures. For example, space station is a structure. Body of an airplane is a structure. Hull of a modern cruise liner is a structure. Chassis of a car is also a structure. Today we want to talk about a special kind of a structure called trusses. Truss structure is widely used in the design of bridges and roofs. The function of a truss is to transfer the loads from one location to another location, typically to the foundation and to the ground. Next time you go to Costco or Home Depot or to a large warehouse, look up and you will see many steel members arranged in a way to support the roof. What you are looking at is a roof truss. A roof truss takes the weight of the roof and the snow on the roof, if you get snow where you live, and transfer that load to the walls and to the foundation. A bridge truss takes the weight of the cars and trucks and transfer it to the support pillars. What makes a truss special compared to other structures? Well, trusses are lightweight compared to large load they can support. They can do this by carrying the load very efficiently. Truss structures use triangle elements in the design which makes the structure rigid. Let's talk about this. I'm going to make a structure with four members connected by pin joints. I'm going to do this with Lego pieces. Here I have four members, one, two, three, four. And they are connected by pin joints. And this structure, when I apply a load, is not stable. It collapses. not table. Now take a look at this structure made of three members and this forms a triangle. This structure is stable and rigid. The triangle geometry is inherently rigid and will stay together unless you break it. So the basic building block of a truss is a triangle. Large trusses are constructed by attaching several triangles together. A new triangle can be added to the truss by adding two members to this triangle. A truss constructed in this fashion is known as a simple truss. Here I have a model bridge and this bridge is made of simple truss on each side. With this basic introduction, we can now analyze trusses. Before we start, I want to make sure we keep in mind the following four assumptions made in the analysis of truss structures. Truss members are connected at their ends only. You can see this in this bridge. They are all connected at the end point. Truss members are connected by pin joints only. A truss is loaded only at the joints. For example, here, here, here. This means the load can be applied at these joints in the bridge, not in between the members. The weight of the truss member is neglected. These assumptions lead to another interesting fact. Since the weight of the member is ignored and the member is loaded only at the ends, each member is subjected to axial loads only. Let me remove a member from this model bridge now and show this. This member takes only axial load. Therefore, each member can only be in tension or compression. Such members are called two force members. So each member of this model bridge is a two force member. So we can define a truss as a structure entirely made of two force members connected by pin joints. This understanding of trusses make truss analysis very easy. Let us now consider a simple truss and perform static analysis in the next video.